Hi, my name is Tony Vera. This video is 1984. The Newsweek, Bill's Voice, and the Joe Franklin Show helped me get better. I was stabbed in Washington Square Park, almost died, and these people really helped me get better by putting me on the show in their magazines. And I want to thank the New York City Fire Department for supporting me. Here's the video. Again, we say good morning and bad head cold. Good morning and bad head cold, but I'll say what I said yesterday. If I sneeze at you, you're well uh, protected by the distance, but I'll try not to sneeze at you. I want to tell you that today's show is nothing going to be sneezed at because we've got some marvelous people representing the world of comedy. Larry Miller, who is certainly of the moment to all the important shows. World of Arts, Miss Helen Haddad, who is a uh, cult favorite among uh, many, many uh, devotees and adherents. Uh, in the tri-state area, we're going to uh, cover the wonderful world of love and romance with Emily Marlin of Taking a Chance on Love. And some very glamorous ladies to join that love panel today. Amelia McQueen of uh, Ain't Misbehaving. She won all the awards and of the recently uh, uh, not too long-running Harrigan and Hart. Also, Hilary Ross and Miss Allison Williams and uh, all kinds of excitement. Before we meet uh, Sidewalk Vaudeville number one, Tony Vera, my newest uh, discovery. I thought I'd reintroduce a couple of yesterday's discoveries. We began uh, by mentioning that Mike Dugan has won the Show Business uh, Award of the Year, presented by Philip Anderson for the Blues Guitarist of 1984. And I'm sure that uh, popularity is running into 1985. Now, Middlesex County, which is one of your home bases, that embraces what, what particular uh, spots or townships or whatever. Well, if you're not familiar with New Jersey, you might have heard of uh, Plainfield or Somerville. Uh, Route 22 runs down through those towns, and Middlesex is somewhere in between. Middlesex is somewhere in between. <laughs> and uh, may we ask about any forthcoming engagements of Mike Dugan? Yes, Joe. Well, look for me in New York at Dan Lynch Blues Bar on March 13th, and I'll be in the village at Kenny's Castaways March 27th, another Wednesday used to be a chain of stores years ago called Dugan's where people would line up waiting for day-old bread. They, it was called Dugan's Day-Old Bakery and the people that's would line up all day to save a penny. Remember those? That's before our time, right, Valerie? <laughs> Valerie yes, Morrison. I wasn't agreeing. <laughs> <laughs> Valerie Morrison was here yesterday. She is a uh, famed psychic from Philadelphia. Somebody told me I've got to ask Valerie what to do if somebody uh, says, you've been cursed. I place a curse on you. you got to tell us, how do we uncurse? Very interesting. Is there an answer? Oh, sure. Uh, as soon as someone tells you that, they've put a, uh, that someone has put a curse on you and that's why you're having all this bad luck and you can't hold a man in your life or a woman in your life or whatever the case may be and you'll never hold on to any money and, and you have to bring me $500 in the heart of a chicken and, and uh, squeeze up a tomato and I'm going to double this money for you and everything will be wonderful. It's a scam. Get away from them as quickly as you can. Whenever I find that happening in some of the, the sections of Philadelphia, and I do, I usually call in the detectives to take the money to them, marked money, and have them chased right out of the city just as promptly as I can. Hmm. I really don't like anyone taking advantage of anyone, so I do believe that we all have good luck and bad luck, 
but I don't believe in curses, so get that out of your mind. Do you believe we'll ever have another president named Kennedy? No, I no. believe we'll never have another president named Kennedy. Uh, we were speaking about that earlier. In fact, that uh, Nostradamus said three brothers will reign and three brothers will fall. And as far as I'm concerned, Edward Kennedy is reigning in his own way. I did say on national television he would drop out of the race, and he did, and that Jackson would throw his hat in the race, and that all happened. I do not see uh, Edward Kennedy coming up, and I do believe that uh, whatever is happening with the Kennedy family as far as uh, a siege of un, uh, bad luck and, and bad things that are happening will break itself with the death of Ed Kennedy. And what the children you? then will be safe. I feel Ed Kennedy's life is very much in danger within the next two years. All right. What do you see for Mike Dugan or for the inventor of the unball? The unball I like very much, and I had mentioned the fact that this is going to go over very well and should really be put in some way into some medical stores, if you were thinking about that, because of the arthritic thing. And I had mentioned that with Mike, that perhaps even with the hands and using the guitar and people that have played piano and the source for children is very safe. I feel it's going to be a winner, and it's going to go quite well, and I feel nationwide here, so you're going to have to, you know, be doing more than just shows here. You'll be doing shows all over. It's a success, and I think you have something else in your mind already about something new you're going well, to what's do. what's on my mind, I should tell you, in case you weren't watching yesterday, this young man is named Bill Seidel, and besides the unball, which we'll talk about right now, he gives a course at a prominent university, and the course, one more time, Bill, is called? How to Patent, Market, and Develop Your Idea, and I teach that at San Francisco State University. And what topics are mostly covered in that uh, course? Well, we cover it from the beginning, where you go through the initial creativity of developing an idea, taking it up through developing the prototypes, through developing the business plan, seeking venture capital, going through your marketing, and then uh, finally getting it implemented and introduced. What, what are any of the qualities, uh, Bill, of a successful invention? A lot of hard work. Really? A lot of effort and perseverance. And uh, I think that's probably the biggest single element, is to have the perseverance to see it through. Bill mentioned yesterday uh, the one he would have uh, enjoyed inventing the most was the waterbed. Oh, yeah. I, I think that was a, a great invention. Right. It was, it was a wonderful, uh, and I got to see how that developed because it also happened at San Francisco State. What uh, popular, first of all, what is the unball and what popular games can be played or unplayed with the unball? And then we well, get a feeling from Tony Vera. The unball is a ball that won't bounce, bruise, it won't roll, so it won't roll into the street. It kind of stops. It's very safe. It's good for children all the way down to ages six months or a year old. And uh, you can throw it hard play with it outdoors or indoors. Uh, you can, it, it's just a fun toy for the entire family. Mother can play with son, grandfather can play with granddaughter. It includes everybody. What do you think, Mike? You're not uh, exactly a game inventor, but you're a man with a wide work and alert and curious mind. What, what goes through your mind about the unball? Uh, a thing that goes through my mind is uh, I wonder how many other ideas there are in the minds of men that have yet to come that will serve a purpose. That's a great question. That's a great uh, comment, right, Bill? I see them all the time, yeah, and uh, uh, that's something that really needs to be developed and pursued. People come up with ideas and they say, gee, if I would have done that, or I thought of that ten years ago, uh, it's that perseverance. When you get the thought, when you have that eureka experience, you have to start working on it. You have to do it. I am see How many unballs are bouncing around the world today, or unbouncing around the world? Mm -hmm. Oh, I, we, we've just started marketing it, although I've been working on it for about six years. I developed it six years ago. Right. Um, uh, we've got about 50,000 out. I started a... Uh, I'll tell you one thing that I want to give some to the uh, people at the uh, Kingsbridge Veterans Hospital next time I go there. I am the right. show there the other day, mm -hmm. and the two showstoppers were Arthur Tracy, the street singer, who's just magnificent a young man named tony vera who is written up in newsweek as one of the all-time beloved sidewalk vaudevillians and a lot of people don't know even i don't know are, are there more and more sidewalk uh, wandering troubadours and wandering jesters appearing on the streets of uh, the well, well joe now there is because the Willis voice had a, a big contest last year right for the best performer of the streets so now it's more legal the mayor of new york is, is starting to accept the fact that we're out there performing but a few years back, I was arrested for performing on the street, just doing my show on the street. But there was a headline event now that I, even I didn't know, that, that street performing is now legal. It's not legal in the books. Oh, not in the books. Yes, but uh, they, they let you go with it now, because the mayor's involved with it now. I guess not, you can't make it legal. If you do, it, it's too many shows out there. Right, too many kids. Yeah, so now it's, it's illegal, and 
a few guys go out there and stay that way. You want my opinion? I know the mayor watches us when he's uh, shaving in the morning <laughs> and getting rid. I think the street performers are an asset to the city. I think they should be advertised as a tourist attraction. What do you think, uh, Mike? Good, uh... I've done it myself. Really? There's nothing like uh, walking down the street in the springtime with music in the air. You like that, Valerie? It. Oh, I do. I really do. I, I remember uh, many years ago coming to the village here and seeing young men dancing in their bare feet and, and yes. for a few pennies here and there, and I thought they were marvelous, and it's the exciting days that are almost gone, and I think we need it back What's again. the status in San Francisco, Mr. Seidel, of street performers? Well, San Francisco is full of street, street performers, and uh, they've got human jute boxes and all kinds of crazy things, and it's legal there. Yes. Fishman's Wall, right? Yes, yes. How about, Mr., before we show a little bit of videotape, a little bit from this young man on the life and times and career thus far of a young man named Tony Vera. Tell us where you've been and uh, and why in this picture, i got to ask you, yes. are you wearing a bandage? Yes, I was uh, stabbed uh, August 4th by a mugger. He came to the park to, uh, in my show, I have a real big audience. He came in the show to rob my purse. Who mm -hmm. saved your life? The fans. Uh, Are you serious? Yes, he stabbed me in, my, in the lung. The lung collapsed. Wow. And he's ready to do, do me in. And the fans ran after him, chased him. And he stabbed a uh, uh, guard in the face. Mm. And I, I stayed a month in the hospital. Really? And uh, that was a horrible experience. But my mother, the fan, my fans, and the Villa's Voice, they came down and showed a lot of support for me to get better. Right. I'm going to support this fellow from now on. He is great. you got to see him in action with the audience participation. How would you describe the act? I mean, if you well, would show the tape anyhow, but how would you verbalize it? Uh, they call me a dad though, they call me a fireman, but this year I'm going to start doing co more comedy skits. I want to go right. on Star Search, I want to be on work in comic strip uh, in, in April to develop my comical uh, part of me. Because uh, my job is to make people laugh, that's my job. What was your biggest break or your biggest opportunity so far, Tony? Ripley's Believe It or Not, I've been on that, and I've been on PM Magazine, I've been on To Tell the Truth. But biggest break right here, Joe, being on the Joe Franklin oh, show. Oh, I love you for that. No. <laughs> Valerie, you want to see, what do you want to say? Yeah, I, I was feeling, Tony, you had mentioned comedy, and I feel that's very real for you. Yes, it is. But the one thing that I'm getting around to is the fact that you might be asked to do something as a stuntman. Has that ever been approached to well, you yet? I climbed the Brooklyn Bridge, and I was pulled to jump off in the straitjacket. The police stopped me. Uh, I was fined 500 bucks. I ah. was, you know, I'm tired of doing dead old stuff. Okay. I want to do comedy and make people laugh. That's part of my job. Laughter. I feel laughter is, is what we need in today's world, but I feel that if something comes up for you, and I feel that it will, in a comedy, where yes. you would be able to do part in some way of stunt, I feel that you might have something to do with Eddie Murphy in the future. Eddie Murphy is a, he's a king of comedy, along with Richard Pryor and all that. I'm called more of a pop comedian. I use props to make you laugh as well as I will talk, but I use various props. And right. I'm, stunts, no more stunts for me, because I'm tired of climbing bridges, I'm tired of hanging up being in a straight jacket, upside down on the rope, on just fire. Wanna, just want to ask Bill Seidel one question. We're going to give him an unball to use in the act from now on, right? <laughs> <laughs> unball, we'll supply him. And gentlemen, emerging from the counterculture, igniting into the mass culture, a sample now of Tony Vera, and I'll say it again, a young fellow to watch in 1985. Just a teeny weeny sample of the act of Tony Vera. And he's fantastic. <laughs> Why? 
couple of... Uh, what did we see precisely there? Uh... That was a show I had in 1983 at Hunter College High School. I do over 145 uh, shows for, for, the, for the Board of Ed and schools for free. A couple of photographs here from the private files of uh, that's Tony. Great. That's Vera. Washington Square Park. I do shows every Saturday and Sunday. Which park? Washington Square in the Village. All right. Big following down there. Big following. What's happening here, Tony? That's when I blow fire out of my mouth. I take uh, some, some gasoline and I blow big fire explosions. Oh, yeah, well, that's kind of dangerous. It's not for us. <laughs> I would say. That's my show at Hunter College High School. That's a 560 show. I'm plugging fire detectors and smoke mm. uh, alarms. Winner of many, many, many awards. His name is Mr. Tony Vera. We'll be following his career as a uh, sidewalk and uh, inside uh, vaudeville. Yes, not just all new comic. All new comic. I'll be following the career of Mr. Mike Dugan. I want to uh, thank uh, Valerie Morrison for being a warm and wonderful guest. And if anybody wants to... Uh, Watch you on TV or, or be in touch with you? Any, any, uh... Well, they can call me at 215-483-8881, which is a Philadelphia number, and find out where I will be appearing next or how to be in touch with and me. What's the office. NBC show you're on? What's it called? I'm on uh, Channel 3 Television in Philadelphia, and I do the Washington Panorama show in Washington with Mari Povich. One more prediction of any kind, anything, snowstorms or... Yes, I w I'm glad you asked that because I was feeling as I was sitting here and everyone out there in New York is going to be saying, oh no, but I'm feeling a big snowstorm. Well, we've been pretty lucky so far. Between the 18th and the 23rd of this month, I mean big. Ladies and gentlemen, well, I'll be caring tenderly for my, uh, <laughs> my humble, right? Yeah, take good care of it. And lovingly and affectionately, that's for the act. Uh, Tony, oh, yeah, thanks, Phil. <laughs> you're a great man. We should return. Oh, we should return. <laughs> Some very exciting people. Our topic is going to be love and taking a chance on it and uh, how to know if it's real and true and uh, stuff like that. Stay with us.